All right, everybody, welcome along to this Tuesday afternoon market recap. This is continuing off from Friday session, whereby between the two, we have endured that of the US Labor Day public holiday. So it is going to be that of an abbreviated week's worth of trade. However, what I can say as at the close on Tuesday is that a lot of what we spoke about over the weekend in regard to that of the market structure has more or less played out as at the close of today's session. Let me just explain a little bit more. Last week, if you recap or if we rewind between that of Wednesday and of course Thursday's session, we were left with once again, as we have done on a number of occasions throughout the period of August, another gap to the upside. Now that gap as at the close on Friday, still was yet to actually break above 2,946. We were yet to establish that of a push above, an intercession push, then of course a close, followed by a continuation. So we moved into the week or what we spoke about over the week was that this resistance perimeter is still very much so effective. So is of course this bottom support area and the likelihood that in the first half of the current week, was that we were going to trade on back down to at least close this open window. Now, if you pay attention to the H, which is going to represent that of the high on Wednesday, followed by the L, which is right beside it, where I hover it over today's session, you're going to see that on the S&P 500, on Wednesday, the high was 2,890. That, of course, was right the highest print prior to the gap that we saw on Thursday last week. Now, if you pay attention to this candlestick, whereby you want to look at the L, which is the low, you can see it's 2,891 points. It's pretty much, let's round it up to 2,892 points. So essentially right now, we still have that of an open window. However, it's very, very marginal. It's only two points. Now, technically speaking, right, the actual application of gap theory to the markets what that dictates to us right now is that this window, right, is essentially closed. Although it is or it does have a two-point gap, what we have done certainly is pulled back to the margin of 20 points during today's session. And as such, when you have a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the NASDAQ, those other two markets have closed that exact same gap. Let me change on over to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see again Wednesday and Thursday. Here's today's session. You can see this long lower wick overshooting that of the Wednesday high. This represents that of a hammer candlestick. It is technically at a support area because of an open window, but this is exactly the type of candlestick that you would want to see when right, we're closing a window in regard to the current environment. And obviously this sort of consolidation, what I technically think it is an accumulation throughout the period of August. When I change on over into the NASDAQ as well, a little bit of a different candlestick. It isn't that of a hammer at support. It's more of just an ordinary dark day candlestick. A little bit of indecision there. It does represent that of a spinning top. However, the real body of the candle, it is you know quite large compared to that of the upper and lower wick. But again, the application of Dow theory, you can see very much so that we have overshot the open window and we actually closed on up above the tip of Wednesday's intra-session high. So what does this mean? In this Tuesday afternoon market recap, I'm not going to go into the top 12 individual trade list on the left-hand side of my screen. In fact, I'm going to continue off from the discussion that we had last week because it was really in two parts. The first part was actually closing that window. And again, largely it has happened. Of course, we can sort of overshoot it. We can come on back down a little bit lower, but really what you want to look at, and these are the clues of the market that may actually show up as at, or during anyway, Wednesday session, but hopefully by the end of this current week on Thursday and Friday, is that if this market is going to break to the upside out of the perimeter, right, of both resistance and support. So if it chooses to take that of the bullish direction, which is what we firmly believe it's going to do, you're going to want to see the market actually continue to price in or print that of reversal candlesticks, whether or not that's in the formation of potentially a dragonfly doji or even a hammer at support. Maybe it's even a bullish counterattack, right? Now that that window has closed or even a one white soldier and engulfing candlestick, I mean, I can go through the array of candlesticks for you, but what you should be focusing on right now, okay? As a neutral market trader with, however, a little slight bias to the upside based on some of the fundamentals that we look at from time to time, what you should begin to see if this market is to break out is, again, a series of white candlesticks around this gap support or even slightly below it, not necessarily just tomorrow, but over a number of days. And that is going to be the biggest clue that this consolidation that we've been in for really the entirety of August is almost finished. 
I cannot sit here again in good faith and tell you that it's going to happen, say, on Wednesday or on Thursday or on Friday, but that is essentially what you need to be looking at. Don't get caught up in the day-to-day movements, all right? You need to, of course, uh, bring in the, the, the at least Dow theory and also gap theory at this particular time. It is most important and also the extremities of both Bollinger Bands, the upper and lower Bollinger Band, which is really indicating that we are moving into that of a squeeze. And I'm going to show you that in just a few moments time. But again, what you want to see, all right, at this location, a bullish candlesticks at this gap support, which are potentially going to lead to, again, a short squeeze to take us all the way back on up and to retest and ultimately break out above these all-time highs. I know I'm probably in the minority right now, and I understand that I feel as though I have been in the minority during the entirety of this sideways market move. But as it stands, this is the all-time high on the S&P 500, and we're really not all that far away from it. If you wanted to call this 3,000, the market print more or less is, is at currently anyway, is at Tuesday, is 2,900 points. So we're really only 100 points from, or a little bit further away from the all-time high. And at the same time, you've got a lot of people telling you that the market itself is topped and it's in the process of reversing. I beg to differ at this particular time. Time will, of course, tell and reveal all, but it's not going to surprise us, especially those in that Pivot Point Pro Analysis class. Now that we've closed this gap, this is the perfect opportunity for the buyers to show up truly, legitimately, and sustainably break out of this consolidation that we've had to endure for the entirety of August. So keep, or at least continue to pay attention to this uh, continuation in the in the way of price format each and every day. But my suspicion tells me that we could see a little bit of a reaction off from this area or slightly lower if the S&P 500 is to begin Wednesday session a little bit uh, weak, you could say, and actually definitively close this gap, i.e. move at least two points lower than where the intra session low was uh, during today's session on Tuesday. Let me just switch on over into the Bollinger Bands. Again, you can see this top band moving up, which is relatively speaking a pretty bullish uh, signal in and of itself, but largely we are still stuck, of course, between this range bound. If we continue to see price action linger around 2,900, you're going to see this top band turn back down and also this bottom band is going to continue on its merry ways to the upside and you are going to see that definitive Bollinger Band squeeze. On the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a very similar picture as I change on over to this particular chart just here. Again, this is a longer term sort of uh, sort of indication of what the Bollinger Bands do. It does take obviously some time for the volatility to stretch out and for those bands to really constrict price nicely. However, it is still under development. And when I change on over into the NASDAQ, this might be the nicest of the three when it comes to the Bollinger Band squeeze. Again, you can pretty much see that we're right pretty much smack bang in the middle of both the upper and lower band. You can see this simple moving average on an 18-day time period. That is the midpoint between the two bands. We are slightly below, but pretty much we are right back where we need to be in order for this Bollinger Band to actually continue uh, its current constriction. So again, think about that as we move into Wednesday session. Um, I'm not surprised again for those privy to that pro analysis class over the weekend that the markets have done what they have as that Tuesday, but now is the moment of truth. It may not reveal itself in one session, but over a period of maybe three sessions, as we tie up this week, this abbreviated week's worth of trade, we could really start to see some major clues as to right the market moving higher, more so on the short term. So I just wanted to leave you with that as at the close on Tuesday afternoon. If you have any questions, please email me, success at pivotpoint-trading.com. Otherwise, I'll see you back in this public forum later in the week as we follow along with the continuation of these daily signals, um, which of course are going to continue. All right, everybody, that's going to do me. Enjoy your Tuesday evening and I'll see you later in the week. All the best. Farewell. Farewell.